touch my spirit and I wanted to share that with you guys on this So I got these in like a regular width and they're so pretty like this mustard color is it and I Morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to an hour of unity with me, Elder Paulette Davidson. I try to calm and encourage us one another and try to be able to put some encouragement and put a little bit of the word, you know, into the atmosphere for us to get through not just the day, but get through this time that we are facing right now. Amen. So I come to you with blessings. Of course, I come to you greeting you from the most high. Amen. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning. Welcome. I come to you just trying to give each other some faith, trying to give each other some encouragement, as well as trying to encourage us to unify together amongst this time and to not be separate. Amen. Amen. So let us go before the throne of grace in a word of prayer before I get started. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank and praise you for this morning. We thank you for another day. We thank it, Father, that you have not seen fit to let us miss this day, but let us to be here on this morning. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you be with us as you open our hearts, open our minds, and open our ears to receive the word that you have for us on this morning. Help us to be encouraged. Help us to be able to unify together to know that better days and that are coming and better days might already be here for some of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning. Welcome, Diva. Good morning. Amen. So this morning... Beloved, I wanted to talk about better days, amen. I put it on the title, I'm not sure if you saw it, but we're going to dip and dabble in about better days if that's all right with you guys. And there's a poem that I'll post as well when I post the video on my Facebook that kind of explains where I got the topic and how I'm going to break this thing down, if that's all right. So a poem by Lessons Learned in Life, it was just something I found a while ago and it really touched my heart. So I wanted to share it, but I also wanted to break it down and how it can relate to our lives and how in the scripture we have to be able to remember that better days are coming, but also better days could already be here. Amen. So the poem says, I've seen better days, but I've also seen worse. I don't have everything that I want, but I do have all I need. I woke up with some aches and some pains, but I woke up. My life might not be perfect, but I am blessed. Amen? Amen. So we're going to talk about what better days are. When you think about better days, or when you hear someone say, you know, better days are coming, or they say, I've had better days, or I'm living in better days, you know, what does that really mean when you feel or hear or say the word better? So the definition of better means a more excellent or effective type of quality. So to say you're having a better day usually means the quality of your day is higher than a worse day. Amen. And we can believe that. So that means if I say I'm having a better day or if someone says, hey, I'm having a better day, that means a better day is higher quality than a worse day. Amen. Y'all y'all with me? Amen. So then it makes me wonder, well, what is a worse day? If we know better day is higher and it's a better quality, then what is a worse day? The definition of a worse day means of a proper or a poor, I'm sorry, a poor quality or a lower standard, less good or desirable. Amen. So lower standard. We already said better is higher and then worse is what? A lower standard. So therefore you would say worse days are lower than better days. Amen. We can agree. Worse days are lower than better days. We have better up here, worse is down here. Amen. Therefore, I pose the question here, beloved, what kind of days have you encountered? Mm. What kind of days have you been going through? Now, I know some of you are saying, Elder, you know what's going on in the world, amen? Yes, I do, I know. And you know we on shut down. So, of course, we are going through worse days. Of course, yeah, I could, I'll give you that, yeah. We could, I could say that. We're going through some worse days right now. But, beloved, I want you to look beyond the world for a moment, if that's all right. I know the worst days are happening right now, but can you, with me this morning, look beyond the world for a moment? Look at what's happening in your life right now. Are you having better days or worse days? Mm. Now, before you answer me, 
I want to go a little deeper. Is that all right? I want to dig just a little bit deeper. Is that all right? Just a little bit. So now to want something, what does it mean to want something? If you read, as I read in the poem, and I'll go back, I say, I've seen better days, but I've also seen worse days. So we already broke it down. We know better days are better than worse days. They're higher and worse or lower. I don't have everything that I want, but I do have all that I need. What, what, what is he talking about? What is, what is that saying there? Well, let's, let's go a little deeper. Now, to want something means to desire it in your life. That means you, you desire to have something. You, you want to have that car. Or you want to have you get your nails done. Or you want to be able to go shopping right now at the mall. That's something you desire to have. However, to need is something that there is a requirement to have. We need to be able to have a roof over our head for some of us, amen. We need to be able to have the lights on, amen. We need to be able to have food on the table, amen. We need to have the grocery stores to remain open so people can have access to the food and to the supplies, amen. That is the need. So there's a difference between a want and a need, amen. Are y'all staying with me this morning, amen? First, we talked about how better days are higher quality than worse days, but then also there's a difference between a want and a need. In the poem it's saying, I might not have everything I want, but I do have everything that I need. Mm, my God. Hey, can you say you can relate, beloved? Do you feel that you're in a space right now, or you're in a presence where you might not have everything you want, but God, you have everything that you need. Amen. I promise you I'm going somewhere, beloved, so stay with me. Amen. So some of us want what we say, a new car. Some of us might want a new house or a house, amen? And some of us also need food. That's a need that we need in our house. And some of us, we need to be able to pay the bills to keep the lights on, amen? This is why if you're not working, you're teleworking. Why? Because you're still able to get paid. Or if you can't telework and you're out of work, they're doing unemployment, amen? Or there's something set up as a system where we're getting a stimulus package, amen? The government understands, you know, just because this is going on and coronavirus is out there does not mean that the needs of the people do not need to be met. Does not mean that things are still going to keep going, amen? So even the government, they understand, our leaders understand there's a difference between a want and a need, amen? Beloved, do you know how grateful and how thankful you are to not maybe have all your wants, but your needs, my God, are being supplied, amen? There is also a big difference between a want and a need, for these things affect our better days and our worst days. I'm a firm believer that the things that we want or desire can affect if we have a better day or a worse day, as well as the things that we need. And sometimes, I believe, beloved, we can get kind of disoriented or we can get kind of shuffled because we assume that what we want makes us have a better day. Well, sometimes that's not the case. What we want could also make us have a worse day because our needs are met. And if we're having what we need, we need to understand that it's it's by the grace of God that we're having a better day. It might not be what we want. It might not look like what we want. However, my God is what, what we need. And that is what? A better day. Beloved, this morning, I'm challenging you to look at your life from a different lens. What else do we have to do? We are sitting here this morning trying to fellowship. We're sitting here, you know, trying to be encouraged. We also have time on our hands to be able to really dig deeper in God and to really dwell into God. So this morning, I'm challenging you to not just see yourself face forward, but look at yourself from a different perspective. See yourself from the side or see yourself from behind. See yourself in a different perspective or from a different lens. Can you see how you might not have everything you want right now? But God, you have the things that you need. Amen. Come on, Holy Ghost, help me here. Yes, we are shut in our homes. And But God, you have a home. Some of us, I don't have a home. I have an apartment. But I still have somewhere to be shut in. Amen. If you haven't been out in the streets, like I take a walk every morning, there's no one to be found. Some people are walking or some people are going to the store, but the homeless are not on the street or there's no one out there begging for money anymore. They have found places for everyone to go somewhere to shelter in place. That is a need that we all need right now. And we have to give God grace and give God praise because we have that need. That is a better day. We have no able to go to our job or we can't go over here but god the need for access to the internet is there i don't know about you beloved but i, I don't know if i could survive 
with my child at home with no internet, amen? You know how these kids are, them tablets, them Roblox, them TikToks, all right? Amen. They need that, amen, to be able to get with their friends or be able to have social time. And we as parents, amen, need that for a break. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the need for internet access is here. I know some of the companies are giving uh, internet access away for free for a month or Xfinity or Comcast. They're saying, you know, that children need to be able to use their tablets or use their computers for virtual learning or for schools. Amen. That need for access for internet is here. That's a blessing, beloved. That is a better day. Amen. That you were able to wake up this morning and even watch me on live this morning. That is what a better day. But God, the need to wake up this morning and see your child's face my God, is what? A better day. Some folks did not make it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some people were not able to get out of bed this morning. Some people are not able to be with their loved ones. Some people may not even be able to call their loved ones. But if you are in a situation, beloved, where you can call them or you can see them, you can FaceTime them, you can text them, that is what? A better day. I want you, beloved, not to look at it as the multitude or not to look at it as something so big. But better days can be as small and minute as just waking up in the morning. Better days can be small and minute by saying, thank you, God, I got food in my refrigerator. Amen. Better days can be so small but so gratifying that we have toilet paper in our bathroom. Amen. Those are the things that we have to thank God for. Those are the things, beloved, that are better days. Those things are higher than the worst days. Yes, the world is going through a worse day, amen. But you, beloved, and I cannot control the world. Only God can control the world. What we can control, what? Are ourselves, amen. So ourselves, as we are going through, as we are going through this tough time, as things don't understand what is going on, beloved, be encouraged because you still are going through what? Better days. If you are still holding on to God's unchanging hand, hallelujah, Jesus. If you are still holding on to the word, that is what? A better day, amen. You have a better day right now in this moment. Do not let the enemy doubt you. Do not let the enemy distract you. Do not let the enemy tell you anything different. Don't listen to the news. Don't listen to what they're going on out there. We need to be informed, but does that mean we have to dwell on what is going on? We need to remember that we are going through better days at this time and right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Better days are going on in your life right now. Amen. That's what I'm saying to you this morning, beloved. I'm glad that you asked, like, well, what are you talking about, Elder? What do you mean better days? You know, I don't feel like it's a better day, or I, I can't see the better day. Beloved, it's there. I promise you, open your eyes. And as you see me and I see you, that's a better day. Amen? Take a breath. Inhale and exhale. That's a better day. Amen? Go into your kitchen and go get something to eat. Whatever you want. Your choice. If food is in the kitchen, is in the refrigerator, what? That is a better day. If you're able to see your children or see your loved ones, maybe not face-to-face -face or not touching, but you're able to FaceTime them or you're able to stay connected, that, beloved, is a better day. You, beloved, have a better day within your own life. This morning, beloved, I've challenged you to look at your life from a different perspective. Look at your life from a different lens. Know that the better day that you are seeking after in the world is already there with you on the inside. It's already there in your home. You have to claim your own victory and know that the better day is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't allow what goes on in the world to affect how you live your life. Amen. If you want to take it to scripture, if you want to read Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, amen. Of course, there's always a scripture to go with what we're going through. The beauty of the Bible is that God always orchestrated some type of message or some type of, uh, of sonnet or some type of thing that be able to go against, go with what we're going through, to give us that encouragement, to give us, excuse me, that niche to move forward amen so in proverbs 3 5 6 i said don't allow what goes on in the world to affect your how you live your life and the lord says in proverbs 3 5 6 that trust in the lord with all your heart come on jesus and lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct that path amen while we're going through this time of chaos while we're going through this unknown or this unforeseen you, beloved, have to trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's how your better day is coming. That's how you get your needs over your wants. 
Don't worry about what you want right now. Don't worry about what it looks like right now. Don't worry about what the future holds. Right now, you have to live in the moment and have that relationship with God to what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That I read before in Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Hallelujah, Jesus. God wants to do more for us. He wants us to be great. But all we need to do is what? Trust in the Lord. All we got to do is not lean to the understanding of the world. We don't have to lean to the understanding of the news. We don't have to lean to the understanding of the government. But lean to God's understanding. Not our own, but to God. Seek after him first. If you ain't get anything else I've been saying for the last couple weeks, seek after God first. That is where you get your healing. That is where you'll get your deliverance, beloved. That is where you're going to get your better days. In all your ways, in everything you do, God says, acknowledge him and what he shall direct that path. Amen. As simple and as easy as it is, beloved, it is just as that. God has already been there. God continues. I don't know about you, but I believe God still sits on the throne. Amen. He is still in control. He is still maneuvering things around for us in this time and in this season. So what do I got to do? I got to trust in the Lord. Amen. I have to believe in God with all my heart. I have to seek to his understanding in everything that I do. I have to not just pray, but I also have to believe in him as I pray. I have to believe in him as I fast. I have to believe in him and take time away or take time to part to focus on who God is. Why? Because if I do that, beloved, that's how the better days are coming. That's how you're going to be able to be filled on the inside. So when the chaos is still going on and the numbers of deaths are still rising, it won't phase you. Why? Because you have the filling of the Holy Spirit. You have the faith and trust in God to say, I still serve a God that is able. Amen. I still believe that he sits on the throne. Amen. He is still a miracle walker. He's still a way maker. Amen. That my God can do anything exceedingly above things. Amen, beloved. So you have to believe within yourself. Better days are already here because it's in your life. Amen. It's not about the world. And it's not about what's going on, but it's in you. Amen. Beloved, I know we are going through a tough time. Trust me, I know. I see it every day. But God, we have what we need. Come on, beloved. I don't know about you, but I'm in a season where I'm able to be fruitful and multiply. That means I'm able to be able to put things into the atmosphere. I'm able to seek after God in prayer for those things that I've been desiring for, those things that I've been needing for spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. And as I'm putting them there and as I'm harvesting there, God is showing up and showing out. He's still blessing me. Amen. I don't know about you, but you might say, hey, I don't know what's going on in the world, but I still have food in my refrigerator. Come on, Jesus. I'm still able to collect the check. If you're teleworking and the direct deposit is still set up, amen, that money is still coming. That's the money you have to be able to pay those bills that are coming, that are still coming. Because bills, what? Never stop. You're able to pay those bills. Or some of you might have called the bills and they say, you know what? We understand we'll give you a month off. Or we understand we'll take care of it for two months with no late fees or no interest charges. Come on, that ain't nothing but God. This is the time that we as a nation have to unify together. Brothers and sisters of Christ, better days are already here for some of us. They're already here. They're already going. And if you're out there this morning and you believe, I don't see it, Elder, or I don't feel it, just know that God is there. God loves you. Take the time to feel God's embrace. Take the time to fast on his word. Take the time to try to sit in a space to feel his anointing. Put on the gospel music or put on the preaching. Do whatever you got to do to set your atmosphere to feel the anointing, to know that God is there and God is watching over you. Amen. We are of good help. Some of us are not sick in the hospital bed. Some of us are not in the nursing home. Some of us, thank God, has not been tested positive for any virus. We have our health. That is a better day. Every day you wake up and you take breath and you're able to take a walk, my God, that is a better day. We have our family and our children who are okay. We check on them. We FaceTime them. We talk to them. And they say, yes, I'm all right. Our coworkers are okay. Our health providers are still hanging on in there. Our nurses and our doctors, they are okay. Those are better days. This is how you can seize one day at a time to be better. Just one day. I'm not saying, beloved, you have to be a miracle worker yourself. I'm not saying you have to conquer the world. All I'm saying is take it one day at a time and see how God is being better in your life. See how God is making your needs to be met. Your wants and desires might not be met right now in this moment. However, 
God is still working things out for you. So we still have to give him the praise, the victory, and the glory. Why? Because our better days are not just here, but they also are coming. Amen. I want to leave you with this, beloved, is how many feel and say that their life isn't perfect, but they are blessed. Amen. How many can say that? I know I can say that. It's all right. We, we good here. It's a safe space. You know, I believe we all can sit there and think about our life is not perfect. Everything, we don't got it all together. Everything is not as beautiful and as rainbows or sunshines as we want it to be. But God, beloved, we are still blessed. Amen. For our life right now might not be perfect. Our life right now does not seem like it's perfect. I know right now our world is not perfect. However, we are still blessed in it. We are still blessed coming in. We are still blessed going out. We are still blessed in Christ. Blessed as a nation and blessed as followers of Christ. I don't know about you, beloved. I haven't seen so many all over across the world praying or so many coming together to, to give God thanks. So many even in the hospitals. I seen a video the other day, the nurses were getting on their knees and giving God thanks. They were getting on their knees and praying that God cover them. I've never seen that. And I'm, I work in healthcare. I worked in a hospital for three years. Never have I seen the activeness and the openness of how God is just moving amongst those, especially those in healthcare, to say, hey, we can't control this. Medicine is not going to be able to get through this or science is not going to be able to figure this out. But we as believers got to come together and unify and believe in God. God is the only way. God is the only thing that's going to be able to get us through and get us out of this thing. We, beloved, are blessed as a nation and we're blessed as followers of Christ. If you don't believe me, go to your word, Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 it says if my people come on jesus who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face turn from their wicked ways that i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land my god he has already said it in his word long time ago before i was born the word has been the word and the word has been written and it has not changed it has not deterred but the word is still firm foundation to stand on if you need something to believe in or if you need some word to look to see god where are you go to second chronicles seven fourteen. And remember, if you are like me, I grew up in the church and I remember hearing this all the time. If my people who are called by my name, my God, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins, what? And heal their land. This is the time, beloved, to seek after God, to humble yourself in God's presence to not give up my god come on jesus help me holy ghost this is the time beloved to not give in to defeat but to keep your trust and your faith in god for healing is coming to our land healing is coming to ourselves amen beloved we have the power we have the victory in christ we got to just tap into that thing we got to really just delve deeper into christ i keep saying every day and i'm going to keep saying it challenge you Go deeper into God. If you already are a believer, we'll praise God for you. But now it's time to what? Go deeper in relationship. If you know someone who's a non-believer, reach out to them and, and encourage them and speak life into them and say, hey, you ain't got nothing else to lose right now. So how about you try God with me? Try Jesus with me. Let's talk about the Lord or let's figure out how we can do Bible study together or let's read scripture together or let's encourage one another. We all, the, the song by Donnie McClurkin says, we fall down. But we get up. Amen. I feel like as a nation, we are down right now. Amen. Some of us feel like the weight is so heavy. Some of us feel like they don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And that's true. We don't know. But as Christians and as believers, we can rise up. We fall down, but we get up. And the only way you get up in Christ is believing in him and trusting in him and thanking God for the small things, thanking God for the things that he has done for you in this season and in this time. Yes, 2020 seems like a crazy year so far, but that's all right because God is still on the throne and God is still blessing us and he is still magnificent with us and he is still faithful to us. We have to continue to trust his word. Better days, beloved. Better days, my God, are coming. Amen. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to play that song again, amen. Better days are coming. Better days are already here, beloved. Remember that God woke you up this morning. Remember that God breath, breathed breath into your life. Some folks did not make it, not even just on today, but some folks did not make it on this year. And I'm a firm believer to believe that God together, amen. At this time, I want to open up for prayer. Any prayer requests, anything that anyone wants to go after in prayer or seek God for, you may put a comment down now. You may do so, or you might just put that on your heart or in your spirit. Anything that you know that we need prayer for. Besides, I know we're going to pray for our nation. Or I know we're going to pray for our healthcare workers. I know we're praying for unity. But anything else that you might be going through or anything else that you feel that you need prayer for, you may comment at this time. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We serve a God that is able. Remember, beloved, be encouraged. God is still on the throne. God is still victorious. God is still working things out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us go before the throne. Dear Heavenly Father, first, I just want to give you thanks and praise. I thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. I thank you for waking us up this morning, Father. I thank you for breathing breath in our lungs. I thank you for your life. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you continue to cover us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, Father. I'm asking right now, Father, for the oil to flow from the inside out like number four. Give us healing in our bodies and our minds and our spirits, Father. I'm praying, Father, that you help to challenge us, Father, as we're in the homes and challenge us while we have to stay home. Challenge us wherever we might be, even if we have to go to work, to dig deeper into you, Father, to remember that better days are coming, but you also are supplying our needs, Father. Help us to be able to see you in a different way. See you from a different perspective. Seek after you like we never seeked after you before, Father. I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that you challenge us, Father. That you help us to go deeper into you. Deeper relationship with you, Father. Deeper insight, Father. Unveil yourself to us, Father, like number four. Help us to increase our faith in you, Father. Help us to increase our belief in you, Father. I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for those who might be doubting you. I'm praying for those who might have fear, Father. I'm praying for those who might have anxiety. I cancel it out right now in the name of Jesus. But I'm speaking praise to them, Father. I'm speaking strength. I'm speaking life, Father, that your peace that passes all understanding might be able to reach them in their homes, in their living rooms, in their bedrooms, Father, on their jobs, or in their cars, wherever they might be, Father. Speak life to them, Father. Let them right now, in the name of Jesus, feel your presence like never before. Let them feel your Holy Ghost like never before. Let them know that you are there in the midst of all of this mess. You are still there, Father. Your God, you are still working miracles. You will still make a way out of no way, Father. Increase us in the name of Jesus. Continue to cover our families. Continue to cover our nation. Continue to cover our leaders to unify together. Give them wisdom and direction for our, our lives, Father, for our land. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you continue to uplift everyone that is doing ministry, every church, Father, that continues to stream live, everyone that is trying to put your word out there and unify together. Bless those, Father, who are doing the work of the Lord and bless those who have a desire to do your work but need to know how to do more. Help us to be able to teach one another to seek after you first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Again, I thank you, beloved, for joining me this morning. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you, Father, for you just being uh, diligent. Those who keep coming, I appreciate it. Those for the support, those who are sharing the videos, those who are watching afterwards, I thank you so much for that because I promise you it's not about me, but it's about him. I do everything I do for the will and the, the diligence and the obedience of God. Amen. Nothing is in it for me, but it's all for Christ. Amen. So I pray, beloved, that you were encouraged on this morning, encouraged by the word, encouraged that better days not are just coming, but better days are also in your life right now. If you can't think of anything good, or if you're getting into those moments of sadness, or you're getting into those moments of fear or anxiety, look to your left and your right. If someone's with you in your home, that's a better thing. If someone is healthy with you, know that God did that. If you're breathing and you're able to cry and have a tear, that's a better thing. If you have food in your refrigerator, that is a need that God is still meeting and that is still a better thing. Do not allow the enemy to distract you 
or to overtake him this time, but to be strong in the Lord and believe in him for all that you need and all that you do and know that God is still able and he still loves you and he is still sitting on the throne working it out for our good, amen? Be encouraged, beloved, stay strong in the Lord and trust in him for everything that you do. Again, I thank you. I'll be back with you guys on Friday at 7 a.m. I'm going to post the video on my YouTube page. I also post it on my YouTube page under the same name, Elder Paula Davidson. Share with those to be encouraged. Share with those to minister together. Share with each other. Stay encouraged, beloved, and know that God is there. Trust in Him. Better days are not just coming, but better days are also here. Thank you so much. I pray that you have an amazing day. Those of you like myself have to telework and do these Zoom calls. I'm praying for you that we get strength to get through these. Amen today. And that will do well today. Those of you who are just helping your children study or do homework is hard. Trust me, I know it's hard for me, amen. But I'm praying for you too to be encouraged, to stay strong, that we're going to be able to help this thing, help our children to be better. We're also going to be able to teach our children right from wrong. We're also going to be able to intercede with them. This is the time that God has set aside for us to connect together and to unify together, amen. So let us continue to stay strong. Let us continue to be encouraged, beloved. I love you all. I pray that you have an amazing and victorious day, and I pray that you enjoy what God is giving you and what he's manifesting in you to do more and to do greater. Amen. God bless you, and have a